Hello beer geeks, I'm super excited to say that I am at the Willy Wonka factory of homebrewing, which is the amazing Malt Miller, who have been so helpful with my craft beer journey, particularly over the last, uh, last 12 months with the amount of homebrewing that we've been doing during lockdown. And I'm also with one of our collaborators with whom we made the monstrosity that was our pumpkin <laughs> spice latte. Uh, this is Andy from Elusive, thanks for coming on. I really like that beer. I, th I, I think yours is great, it's more mine that was the monstrosity. Um, so we are down at Malt Miller, I've been filming with Andy making some homebrewing videos for camera, which you can watch, there will be a link below for that. But with the amazing minds behind the camera and the amazing mind in front of it, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to answer some of the questions that we get in the comments of every homebrew video we do. So this is our top five tips series and we are starting with the mash. So Andy, when we did our pumpkin spice latte, a lot of that was actually about the malt, right? So the, the mash is, you know, that's when the, the bulk of the beer is made. And then from that point, we're sort of almost tweaking the flavors of it. Um, so we've had lots of questions in about how to get the best from your mash, best flavor, efficiency, color, all of that. And I'm gonna test you and maybe come in and disagree at certain points. <laughs> um, so the first question we've got from so many different people is, I'm not getting the efficiency I expect. So if you were asked that, where would you start looking? First thing is check your pH. Uh, pH is a big governor of efficiency on a mash. So get some pH strips or a pH meter, make sure you're hitting around about the 5.3, 5.4 on your pH. Right, is, is it usually too high or too low? Usually too high, particularly if you're brewing pale beers. Um, dark beers, the dark malts can acidify slightly and bring your pH down. But right. if you're brewing pale beers, check your pH. Awesome, there we go. And um, what else, like crush can, can have a big efficiency yeah, gem impact? Yeah, generally the finer the crush, the better efficiency you get, but you don't want to go too fine that you have problems with the stock sparge and slow runoffs and so on. Right. So uh, yeah, keep an eye on your crush. And I guess it would depend on the kit that you're using. So maybe ask your local homebrew store what kind of crush is right and then go as fine as you dare. Exactly. One of the nightmares for homebrewers is stock sparge. So what causes a stock sparge and how do you fix it? Well, usually like a super sticky mash, lots of oats or like glutinous blobby malts. Um, it can really um, <laughs> get some rice holes in there or get some oat husks in there, can help prevent it. Uh -huh. And what, what if your mash has stuck, what can you do? Is it a matter of just waiting while it drip, drip, drips? If you're not in a rush, you can wait or you know, get your mash paddle and give it a bit of a scrape on the bottom there. If you've got like your, your classic dome bottom on your mash tun, you can generally work it and do a bit of another recirc. Right. Uh, but yeah. So it's breaking the golden rule and, not, and stirring the sparge if it's really, really, really stuck. Yes. Okay. So on two of the brews that we've done, we've ended up with a significantly darker color beer than we were expecting. Even though like the recipes we were given were saying you get this amount of color. Is there anything you can, uh, you know, attribute that to or anything you can fix it with? Cause some people say you know, add your dark grains a little bit later. Uh, I think the main thing is make sure you're using the right color grains for the, for the recipe. So if, for example, crystal malts come in lots of different colors. And if you buy one from, one malt producer might be a slightly different color, like your medium crystal varies slightly. So check the color of your crystal malts, especially. And when you say check the color, like you can look at the EBC number and that'll tell you roughly how dark Exactly, it's yeah. Grab the data sheet for that malt producer and that'll tell you what to expect. And you might need to adjust the level of, of your malts in there. Right, so don't just trust the name of the malt, check the EBC on that, on that batch and, and from that producer. Yep. If you haven't quite got the efficiency that you wanted going into the boil and you've already finished mashing, is it okay to boil for a bit longer and then you, you know, you'll be concentrating down that work? Is that a solution? Yeah, you can boil for a bit longer, but you talked about color, that's gonna concentrate and, and intensify the color as well. Another option is to maybe add some simple sugar up to about 10% of the weight of your grain. Shouldn't impact things too much. And when you say simple sugar, what kind of stuff can brewers use? Uh, just table sugar is perfect. Right, just straight, straight from the tea. Yeah, or you can use actually all kinds of sugars like uh, dark muscovado is great in dark beers as that kind of nice toasty, roasty flavor as well. Okay, so you can almost see it as an opportunity to add something new and a, a little bit complex if you're missing Definitely, out. we use that trick in our imperial stouts. Right. Something that I've also found that can really help if you're not getting the efficiency that you need uh, or the, just the straight up gravity that you need, uh, just remembering that, you know, this is an organic process. You're using warm water, you're using natural products, and sometimes there's gonna be variations and something that you can do is just not be stuck regimentally to to your, to your method. So sometimes I've let mashes go on a little bit longer because I'm hoping to get a bit more extraction and sometimes yeah. I've finished early. So we always say like an hour mash, but you don't have to stick to that, right? If you're hitting the numbers. Yeah, indeed. I mean, in fact, some modern malts can convert in as, as little as 15 minutes and some commercial brewers we use conversion 
test with iodine and they'll move on quickly. So the iodine test, that tells you how much starch is left in that mash. Exactly. And whether there's any more extraction to be had from it. That's right. There we go. So everyone, I hope that's really helped you get to the bottom of some of the, uh, the issues you might be coming across in your mash or to come up with some new ideas or new techniques that you can use to get more out of it. If you've got any more questions, we will be delighted to answer them in the comments below. And if I don't know the answer, then Andy will be getting a panicked email. Cheers. <laughs>